All right, the Nebraska Cornhuskers have the unfortunate task of going up against Purdue here today, and that's going to be a 6.30 Eastern tip-off on Friday, January 14th, 2022. Their Purdue Boilermakers are minus 20 with a total at 155. And if you want to see which one of these free YouTube picks on my channel that I'm actually betting on personally, there's only one way to do that, and that's to sign up for a membership on my website at brockpage.com. Now, we currently have packages starting out at just $1.99. We're also three in one in our last four board member tier package picks on that very same website. And the good news is we have another board member tier package pick going off here today. Now, the best part about being a board member is that board members also get access to every single pick that I give out on BrockPage.com all the way through the end of January. So if you were to sign up today for my board member package, the math would actually work out to be just $2.77 a day all the way through the end of the month. And I'll tell you this much, at an average of five premium sports picks a day, it's going to work out to be just around $0.55 cents a pick on average. But when it comes to this Nebraska-Purdue game here, it's Purdue, who's 8-1 uh, straight up on their home court this season. And they're scoring nearly 90 points a game in front of their home fans. Jaden Ivey is averaging over 16 points a game along with five boards and three assists. Ivey's also been really good from downtown this year. He's making 44% of his three-pointers. Meanwhile, seven foot four giant uh, Zach Eady, he's scoring over 14 and a half points a game himself along with seven rebounds and officially 71% shooting from the field. Obviously, a lot of that is layups and dunks, uh, but still, I mean, you get this guy in a position to score, he's going to put it home. 71% from the field for uh, the center there, the seven foot four center, Zach Eady. Now, uh, when it comes to shooting, Purdue as a team is making nearly 44% of their three pointers at the Mackey Arena. They simply don't miss. Uh, they're currently in the top three in the entire nation in offensive three point percentage. Now, they're taking on a Nebraska team who's on a four game losing streak themselves. And they also lost nine out of their last 10. Now, the Cornhuskers are winless on the road this year, and they're allowing, uh, they're allowing 89 points a game when they travel. Now, when it comes to the total in this one, Nebraska went 70% to the over in their last 10 outings, 6-4 and four to the over in their last 10 meetings with Purdue. Meanwhile, the Boilermakers went 3-0 and oh to the over in their last three straight themselves, and those were overs against the likes of Penn State, Wisconsin, and Nichols State. I'm going to lean toward Purdue, minus 20, the over 155. Next contest, it is going to be Buffalo versus Ball State. And that's going to be a 6 o'clock Eastern tip-off. The Buffalo Bulls are minus 7.5 with the total at 163 and a hook. But despite being favored in this one, it's actually Buffalo who's had a pretty tough time covering the point spread here recently. Now the Bulls have gone just 1-5 and five against the spread in their last six outings, and they've done little to slow down other teams scoring-wise. And as a matter of fact, the Bulls currently find themselves allowing 75 points a game on the road, so certainly some defensive struggles when traveling this year. They're taking on a Ball State team who successfully covered in four out of their last five themselves, and those were covers against the, uh, against the likes of uh, Eastern Michigan, Kent State, and Bowling Green. Uh, so doing a good job covering uh, against fellow MAC conference participants. Now the Falcons have also done a... Uh, did I say Falcons? The Cardinals. The Cardinals have done a real nice job at home this year. They're 5-1 and one straight up at the Worthen Arena. And they're knocking down 40% of their three-pointers there. Uh, Luke Bumbelow is uh, scoring over 12.5 points a game along with two boards and three assists. Meanwhile, Tyler Cochran is scoring nearly a dozen points a game himself along with five rebounds and two assists. Now, Ball State is scoring 80 points a game in front of their home uh, home crowd. Uh, now, total-wise, the Cardinals did see overs recently against the likes of Akron, Bowling Green, and Western Illinois. 
Meanwhile, Buffalo on the other side, they saw four out of their last six get over the line themselves. 60% to the over in their last 10 head-to-head -head meetings with Ball State. So if you're into historical trends, certainly think about that one there. I'm going to lean toward Ball State plus seven and a half and the over 163 and a hook. Next game, Manhattan versus Iona, seven o'clock east. Iona's minus 15 with the total at 147 and a half. Now the Gales failed to cover in two out of their last three ball games. And they're also having a tough time uh, rebounding defensively at home. Having said that, though, Iona's averaging 80 points a game at the Heinz Athletic Center, and they've yet to lose a game in front of their home crowd. Tyson Jolly scoring nearly 15 points a game along with four rebounds. Meanwhile, Nelly Jr. Joseph is scoring over 14 points a game himself along with eight rebounds. Now, when it comes to the defensive play of Iona, the Gales are limiting their competition to just 28% shooting from three land at home. Uh, very stingy guarding that three ball. They're taking on a Manhattan team who failed to cover in five out of their last nine themselves. And they've actually really struggled with Iona in recent meetings. As a matter of fact, the Jaspers lost eight out of their last 10 meetings with Iona. And they successfully covered the point spread in only 20% of those contests. Now, when it comes to defensive play, the Jaspers have been horrible on the road as they're giving up over 80 points a game when traveling. And they're also letting their opponents make 40% of their three-pointers against them in that same category. Now, when it comes to the total in this one, Manhattan saw their last seven straight all get over the line. Iona's 5-3 and three at the over in their last eight themselves. I'm going to lean toward Iona minus 15 in the over 147 and a half. <clears throat> Next contest, it is going to be Monmouth versus St. Pete's. And that's going to be a 7 o'clock Eastern start time. Now, Monmouth is minus 4 on the road with the total at 133 and a half. Now, the Monmouth Hawks have successfully covered the point spread in all of their road games this season. They're 9-0 against the spread when traveling, 7-2 straight up in those nine covers. A lot of cashed tickets for Monmouth backers here. Now, the Hawks are in the top 10 in the country in defensive field goal percentage on the road. They're also limiting their competition to just 25% shooting from three land when they travel. This is one of the best defensive teams in Division I. Now, scoring-wise, George Pappas is averaging over 16 points a night along with six boards and three assists. Meanwhile, Shavar Reynolds is drilling 41% of his shots from downtown. 15 points a game for Reynolds. And when it comes to shooting from the stripe here, the Monmouth Hawks are making 81% of their free throws this season, and that puts them in the top 10 in the nation in that category. Uh, a lot of good stats, a lot of good numbers for Monmouth. Uh, certainly keep an eye on them uh, if you're... Uh, if you're a sports better, really. I mean, these guys have been doing a good job cashing tickets for folks. Now, they're taking on a St. Pete's club who failed to cover in five out of their last eight ball games, And they have just three wins overall for the season. The Peacocks have struggled significantly on offense this season as they're averaging just 66 points a game. They also failed to cover the point spread in three out of their last four home games. Now, total-wise, St. Pete's is 67% to the under, for the entire season. Meanwhile, Monmouth saw six out of their last nine road games fall under the line themselves. I'm going to lean toward the Monmouth Hawks, minus four, the under 133 and a half. Next ball game, it is going to be Quinnipiac versus Ryder, and that's going to be a seven o'clock Eastern tip off. The Quinnipiac Bobcats are minus one with the total at 147 and a half. Despite being the slight favorite in this one, Quinnipiac is on a two-game losing streak. And they also failed to cover in six out of their last ten ball games. The Bobcats have struggled defensively on the road this season. They're giving up 78 points a game when they travel. And they're letting their opponents hit over 48% of their field goals against them in that category. Now they're taking on a rider team who won their last two straight themselves. And they covered the number this season against the likes of Marist, Bucknell, and South Carolina. Now, Ryder also got the W in three out of their last four home games. And they're led by 
Dementio Vaughn, who's scoring 13 points a game, and he's also drilling nearly 40% of his three balls. Meanwhile, Dwight Murray Jr. is averaging nearly 13 points a night himself, along with five boards and three assists. Now, total-wise, three out of Ryder's last five outings fell under the posted number. Meanwhile, Quinnipiac saw unders against the likes of Canisius, Maine, and St. Pete's. I'm going to lean toward Ryder, plus one, in the under 147 and a half. Next contest, it is going to be Sienna versus Marist, 7 o'clock east. Marist is minus five with the total at 130 and a half. Now, Marist lost two out of their last three ball games, and they've also had a tough time with Sienna in recent meetings. Having said that, though, Marist has been amongst the best covering teams in the Metro here recently. They're currently 4-1 against the spread in their last five, 7-2 and two against the number in their last nine. Now, Marist is also holding their opponents to just 67 points a game, and they're limiting them to just 39% shooting from the field at home. Now, uh, scoring-wise, Ricardo Wright is averaging over 14 points a game along with four rebounds and 41% shooting from uh, three land. Uh, Wright's been very good shooting the ball from downtown. Meanwhile, Jao Ituka is scoring over 13 points a game uh, himself. He's also shooting 58% from the field. Now, they're taking on a Siena team who lost three of six on the road this year. And they also have a losing record overall for the season. The Saints are scoring only 63 points a game on the road. And they've also done a mediocre job of rebounding offensively. Now, when it comes to the injury report, Playtech and McCollum, they are questionable for Siena. When it comes to the total in this one, the Saints saw unders recently against St. Pete's, Bucknell, and Yale. Meanwhile, Marist on the other side of things, they went 3-1 and of the under in their last four. I'm going to lean toward Marist minus five and the under 130 and a half. All right, next ball game I have for you, it is going to be VCU versus St. Bonaventure, and that's going to be a 7.30 Eastern start time. St. Bonaventure is minus 2.5 with a total at 131. The Bonnies have won 5 of 6 on their home court this year, and they're scoring over 78 points a night at the Riley Center. Jaron Holmes is scoring over 15.5 points a game, along with 6 boards and 4 assists. Meanwhile, teammate Jalen Attaway is also making 41% of his three-pointers. He's been great shooting from beyond the arc. He's also averaging 13 points a game. Now, the Bonnies have also done a real good job of shooting from the stripe. They're currently in the top 30 in, in the uh, nation in offensive free throw percentage. They're taking on a VCU team who struggled to cover the number in recent meetings versus the Bonnies. Uh, they failed to cover in six out of their last 10 meetings with St. Bonaventure. And they're also averaging only 64 points a game this season. Now, Virginia Commonwealth is also, well, they failed to cover against the likes of Campbell, Chattanooga, and St. Pete's this season. When it comes to the number in this one, VCU did see unders against the likes of Dayton, Florida Atlantic, and Jacksonville State. Meanwhile, the Bonnies on the other side, they saw three out of their last six home games fall under the posted total themselves. I'm going to lean towards St. Bonaventure, minus two and a half, and the under 131. Next contest, it is going to be Akron versus Kent State, eight o'clock east. The Kent State Golden Flashes are minus one and a half with the total at 134. But despite being the slight favorite in this one, Kent State has suffered a handful of losses here recently. The Golden Flashes lost five out of their last seven ball games, and they successfully covered the point spread just once during that span. Now, Kent State's also had significant problems offensively this year. They're averaging only 69 points a game, and they're shooting just 29% from beyond the arc. These guys can't buy a bucket from downtown. Uh, they're obviously amongst the uh, Worst in their conference in that particular category. Uh, worst in the MAC. Um, but anyway, they're taking on an Akron team who prides themselves in defensive play as they're giving up only 62 points per contest. Now, the Zips have also gotten the W in seven out of their last eight ball games, and they failed to cover only twice during that span. 
Now, offensively, Ali Ali is making over 44% of his three-pointers. He's been dangerous shooting the long ball. Uh, the guy with the same name, Ali Ali. Uh, watch out for him when he's shooting that long ball. Now, uh, double Ali, Ali, Ali squared. He's uh, averaging 14 points a game as well. Meanwhile, teammate Xavier Castaneda, he's making 91% of his free throws. He's also scoring over a dozen points a game himself. Now, when it comes to head-to-head -head meetings here, Akron successfully covered the point spread in six out of their last 10 games against Kent State. When it comes to the total in this one, Akron saw contests with Ohio, Wright State, and Appalachian State fall under the posted number. Meanwhile, Kent State, on the other side of things, saw five out of their last eight fall under the line themselves. I'm going to lean toward Akron, plus one and a half in the under 134. <clears throat> Next matchup, it is going to be Davidson versus Richmond, 9 o'clock Eastern start time. The Richmond Spiders are minus one, totals 147 and a half. <clears throat> Richmond lost two out of their last three ball games. 71 points a game they're allowing on their home court. The Spiders are also letting their opponents make nearly 40% of their three-pointers against them uh, in front of their home fans as well. They're taking on a Davidson team who's on a 12-game winning streak, and they're drilling nearly 44% of their three balls on the road. This is arguably the best shooting team in all of college uh, basketball. And as a matter of fact, the Wildcats are currently in the top three in the entire country an offensive three-point percentage. Hyung John Lee, he is drilling over 42% of his three balls, and he's scoring 17 points a game. Meanwhile, Foster Lawyer is draining a staggering 50% of his three-pointers himself. Now, the guard is also connecting on 90% of his free throws, and the Wildcats as a team, they're making 50% of their field goals uh, as a unit, and they're ranking in the top 10 of the nation in that particular category. Now, when it comes to the scoring in this one, Davidson 6-3 and three to the over in their last nine ball games. Richmond saw their last two straight get over the number themselves. I'm going to lean toward Davidson plus one in the over 147.5. All right, next contest. It is going to be in the Big Ten. I'm talking about Michigan versus Illinois, 9 o'clock Eastern start time. Illinois is minus 9.5 with a total at 145. Fighting Illini won their last five straight, 10 1 straight up in their last 11. Illinois beat the likes of Minnesota, Iowa, and Notre Dame this season. They're also 7 1 straight up on their home court. And they're in the top three in the nation in offensive rebounding. And speaking of offense, the Illini scoring 82 points a game in front of their home fans. And they're also in the top 20 in the country in three point percentage. Alfonso Plummer is drilling 41% of his three balls, 15 points a game for the guard. Now listen to this. Plummer's also making a staggering 98% of his free throws. He's 42 of 43 this season from the stripe. That's amazing. Meanwhile, big Kofi Coburn, he's scoring 22 points a game and averaging 12 and a half rebounds per contest. And speaking of boards, Illinois is in the top 15 in the country in defensive rebounding. They're limiting their competition to just 38% shooting from the, uh, from the field in front of their home fans. Now, Illinois is taking on a struggling Michigan program who lost three out of their last four themselves. And they've actually done a really poor job of covering the number. As a matter of fact, the Wolverines got the job done in only three out of their last nine. And they're giving up 72 points per contest when traveling this year. And when it comes to the total in this one, Michigan went 5-1 and one of the over in their last six. Meanwhile, Illinois went 80% to the over in their last 10 themselves. 75% to the over on their home court. I'm going to lean toward Illinois minus 9.5 in the over 145. <clears throat> Next matchup, it is going to be Fresno State versus UNLV. 11 o'clock Eastern start time. Fresno's minus one and a half with the total at 130. Now, the Bulldogs have done a real nice job against UNLV in recent meetings. They went 7-3 straight up in their last 10 contests against the Rebels. And they successfully covered the point spread in 90% of those ball games. 
Having said that, though, this year, Fresno's just one and four straight up on the road. And they're scoring only 58 points per contest in those road games. Now, equally as bad, the Bulldogs are being held to just 28% shooting from three land in that same category. They're taking on a UNLV run and rebel team who won five out of their last six themselves. And they're also limiting their opponents to just 38% shooting from the field at the Thomas and Mack Center. As a matter of fact, the Rebels allow only 62 points a game in front of their home fans. Now, offensively, when it comes to scoring, UNLV is led by Bryce Hamilton, who's scoring over 18 points a game along with three boards and a couple assists. Meanwhile, Donovan Williams is shooting 45% from beyond the arc. and He's also averaging over 13.5 points a game. Now, total-wise, the Rebels saw their last two straight fall under the posted number. 8-4 to the under in their last dozen at home. Meanwhile, Fresno State saw five out of their last nine fall under the total themselves. Those were unders against the likes of Weber State, Utah, and San Diego. I'm going to lean toward UNLV, plus one and a half in the under 130. And with that, guys, uh, we're going to go ahead and jump into our quick pick recap. And that is powered to you by my website at broadpage.com. We are currently 3-1 in our last four board member tier package picks. I like Purdue, minus 20, over 155. Ball State, plus 7.5, over 163 and a hook. Give me Iona, minus 15, over 147.5. Give me Monmouth, minus 4, under 133 and a hook. I like Ryder, plus 1, under 147.5. Give me Marist, minus 5, under 130 and a hook. I also like St. Bonaventure, minus 2.5, under 131. Give me Akron, plus 1.5, under 134. <clears throat> I'm also leaning toward Davidson, plus 1, over 147.5. Give me Illinois, minus 9.5, over 145. I like, uh, with my next and final free pick for the video, I like UNLV, plus 1.5, and, and the under 130. And with that, guys, that's going to do it for me. Don't forget to check me out on BrockPage.com. Now, if you guys do end up getting a membership here today on my website, just keep in mind you're going to get billed the day you sign up and then the first of every month following that. So if you do end up getting a membership here today on my website, uh, you are, you're you're going to get access to those picks all the way through the end of January. And I always tell folks in every single video, the earlier in the month you sign up, the better. Um, but... Most importantly, and guys, let me tell you this, we're hitting a rough patch right now. I said it before in my other video. Uh, I don't make any guarantees. I don't guarantee any wins. I've never guaranteed wins. It's a tough business. It's tough to handicap games. It's tough to bet on games. It's tough. Uh, it's just a tough business. It's a tough hobby. If you don't have the fortitude to be able to withstand like seven, eight days of losing, this ain't for you. It's just not, man. It happens. It's a part of the game. If you can't handle it, it's not for you. And my website's not for you either. But uh, anyway, guys, most importantly, I got to thank you for joining me right here on YouTube. I really hope you enjoyed all this great free content, all this great free information. And with that said, guys, happy Friday to you. Best of luck to you. And I look forward to seeing you later on today on my website at brockpage.com.